Bowling Green, Mississippi State's opponent this week. Tulsa, Ole Miss's opponent this week. Both the Bulldogs and the Rebels are big favorites. Mississippi State a 30-point favorite against Bowling Green. Ole Miss a 21-and-a-half-point favorite now against Tulsa. What can we learn this weekend? And I, I think there's a simple answer for Ole Miss. Hey, Dad, let's start, though, with Mississippi State. Um, I know you guys talked about it some yesterday. It's been the hot topic on the message boards and on my podcast, and that's the rotation of players. Um, you know, I talked yesterday to MSU assistant coach Drew Hollingshead. That interview will be on the uh, the tailgate uh, pregame show I do every uh, every home game. And I, I, I tried to find a way to ask him, can you move receivers around without just asking it like that? And he gave an answer that made it pretty clear, no, that's not, that's not in the plans for Mississippi State. So, you know, I feel like they're leaving a lot of meat on the bone by not having some formations and having some packages that have Tulu Griffin and Ra-Ra Thomas on the field at the same time. But that, that'd be what it, what it is. Same thing on defense, though. I don't think State has done a good job of rotating guys. So this is a, an opportunity to play a lot of players. They didn't play a lot of players against Memphis. Didn't play a lot of players against Arizona. This is a game where you should be able to play a lot of players and start getting an idea of who can really help you because you've got to have more depth available. And they have depth. They have players. They have guys I feel like you can rely on. They're just not playing them for some reason. So that's something they have to look forward to because these next three games after this are are what defines your season. So we kicked this around a little bit yesterday, Borky and I did, after listening to, to Mike Leach's press conference. Because he was asked kind of in the neighborhood of that, and he said, well, you know, six months right. ago, nobody knew who Ra Ra Thomas was, and, you know, guys are going to emerge and all that Which is stuff. inaccurate. Which is inaccurate. I knew who Ra Ra Thomas was. I've been talking about how I think he's going to be a superstar. He scored five touchdowns last year. I knew yeah. who he was. Of course you did. But you're locked in on a daily basis to, to Mississippi I State mean, football. But, yes, I think people know who Ra Ra Thomas is if you kind of follow yeah. Mississippi State football. Right. Who's the guy that should be getting more consistent touches? You know what my answer is. Well, I mean, I agree with you that Tulu Griffin, but I believe Ra Ra Thomas should be as well. The question isn't, you know, to sacrifice one at the expense of the other. The question is, why can't they both be on the field? Why is Tulu Griffin playing out of position as a five foot ten outside receiver when you could put him in the slot and, and design plays for him there? Why, why Why? is he locked into that X position? See, and, I feel and, like and, this is bothering you and is bothering people a little bit more now, and this is something that I brought up a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and you were like, it is. they're just not doing it, which which is still the answer, they're not right? Doing they're, it. they're not doing but it's, it. But now all it, of a sudden it's It's frustrating like, to watch. I mean, Tula Griffin averages, when you take his returns into account, Tula Griffin averages 18 yards every time he touches the ball. You've got to have him on the field as much as possible. Ra-Ra Thomas is turn. You can see him maturing and evolving into a top tier SEC receiver. He needs to be on the field as much as possible, and it just doesn't make sense. You know, I, I've never, you know, I'm not Mike Leach. Mike Leach smarter than me, but knows more about football than me. I'll admit all that. But I, the idea that you don't just find your best receivers and put them on the field. I mean, AJ Brown played outside, played in the slot, played wherever. Ole Miss moved guys around to to. to put the best people out there. Elijah Moore you know, spent a open, game in the backfield because they felt like that yeah. was the best way to get him touches against South Carolina. They handed the I, ball off to him. I said I said that last year that Tulu Griffin coming out of the backfield would be a great weapon on some swing passes, some toss sweeps, some jet sweeps. Also, there, the idea that you can't get your best playmakers the football is incredibly frustrating. Do, do you remember LSU's fr- national championship team where – four or five snaps a game, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire was almost yeah. touching the sideline. He was wa- lined up so wide away from the backfield. Mm-hmm. That's When you're an offensive head coach and you have playmakers, your first priority is how do I get them the ball, to design plays to get those guys the ball. You can't just put them out there and say, well, if they get open, we'll try to throw it to them. You've got to have a play where, hey, you're going to Tulu Griffin. Hey, you're going to Ra-Ra Thomas here. 
No, you can't force Unless it, they, you know, but, but you are trying to design force a play it, but to get That's them the, the ball. primary objective of the play, yes. Yeah. Or, like I said, you know, Tulu Griffin is a guy who could take a handoff out of the backfield on a jet sweep and do some damage. But, but there's, that, that play doesn't exist in the playbook. So, so herein lies the, the rub or the frustration or, or the truth. Let's just use the two head coaches in the state in which we live. Lane Kiffin has made it abundantly clear that we don't really have a system. We design what we do offensively to get our best players the football. Right now, Ole Miss's best players are in the backfield, and they ran it 60 times against Georgia Tech this weekend. You want to go back to when he was at Alabama, when he had a stud running back, they ran the ball a ton. When he had Calvin Ridley, they ran their offense through Calvin Ridley. That's the way Lane Kiffin does it. And it's, Mm -hmm. for the most part, been a successful offensive philosophy. That's not how Mississippi State's Mike Leach does it. He says, this is our system. This is how we run it. And guess what? It's been successful. And I get the idea of the system. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the depth chart that's bothered me. Let's look at it like from an NFL perspective, right? You know, who are the best two wide receivers in pro football? You know, let's just say, you know, Michael Thomas and give me, give me another one, Borky, just off the top Waddle. of your head. Okay. Now let's just say Jalen Waddle can play inside, but let's just say they're both outside receivers. The Saints make a trade. They acquire Jalen Waddle, and he plays, you know, the same position that Michael Thomas. Are, am I really supposed to believe that the Saints are going to be like, well, we can't get them both on the field at the same time because they play the same position. No. No. I mean, am I supposed to believe that if, if we woke up tomorrow and Kayshawn Booty decided to transfer to Mississippi State and he was immediately eligible, well, then I guess you know he's at the X and then Ra Ra's behind him and then Tulu's behind. That's what we're, we're, that's what would happen. No. You got to get your playmakers on the field. I understand that the, the whole concept of repetition and you want to be able to do things perfectly, but you've got to be able to design a couple of plays here and there where you can get Ra Ra Thomas, Tulu Griffin, maybe Xavion Thomas. On the field, those are your most explosive guys. I understand why it's frustrating, like completely. Ceasefire text line, both on the field together. Surely one of them would be open. Another message: the system sucks to get the talent on uh, the football on every play. Um, do you think he designed plays for Michael Crabtree at Texas Tech? That's a good question. Crabtree, yeah, he's an elite outside receiver. He's a guy that can get himself open in the course of the offense. Tulu Griffin as an outside receiver, not the physical specimen that Michael Crabtree is. So Griffin, he's at 18 yards per play. reception, right? Per touch. 18 yards per touch. It, t- it takes his returns into account. Okay. Well, Michael Crabtree, his second year in Leach's system, averaged 12 yards per reception. Which is about what Griffin is averaging in terms of catches. Yeah, let me double check. That. You take the return. Yeah, I mean, I, I I may not be exact, but I looked it up yesterday, and it was like twelve or thirteen, I think. I'll let you double check me on the stats. Maybe I'm off and I'm not remembering that correctly. It's, it's right at twelve. Ten yeah. catches for 120 yards. Yeah, exactly twelve. <laughs> Good math. Yeah. Teammates I mean, here. The math. 